Sisters, how y'all doing today? Well, I hope y'all doing very well today because guess what? Today's your day. <laughs> Brothers, how y'all doing? Good. Good, all praises. Well, wait a minute. Wait Bro a minute, Bishop. Brothers and sisters online, we say shalom to you all. So maybe I messed up on the sister side was because of what you're ready to do. It, so you're saying it was spiritual? It was spiritual. <laughs> all right. See there? All right. I knew it. I knew it. So <laughs> y'all sisters are up to something. We're going to find out about We're it today. We're going to find out. Today's class is entitled, for many of you brothers, it's going to, it, it seems like it's a part two from last week, but it's not. I was going to dead the issue until we got emails as a result of last week's class. So today's class is entitled, Because You Obey Your Wife. Because You Obey Your Wife. That's today's class. Now, before... Yeah, I wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Uh, can we blow that up bigger? Y'all know I'm half blind. Pat. Okay. Pastor makes female members perform. Y'all at home, you don't want your kids to see it. Just take them out the room, please. I'm going to get an email. How you going to put that on the screen? Your kid don't know what this is saying. Then again, maybe they might. <laughs> Have them go out the room then. Pastor makes female members perform oral sex in church. Says his privates have holy milk, which heals members. <laughs> now, y'all are laughing, but y'all stop and I know a certain young man. He ain't a young man now. Who taught that at the old school? And I wouldn't, I, said, we, I told my wife, we ain't going back to that class no more. We remember him very well. I ain't going to say his name. I want to, but I ain't going to do it. So all that, I'm telling y'all, y'all have, we've only, we haven't revealed everything at the old school. Y'all would be, y'all would be so shocked. I'm serious. When you hear people say that they originate from the old school, run, run. I'm just, I saw like a warn y'all. You hear them, I, we came back from way back then. Run, head for the hills. Special liniment. Yeah. Remember that word? Mm -hmm. I remember. <laughs> So this dude, wait, what is y'all doing? I'm still at the top and y'all is. <sighs> Pastor makes, I say, I got to read it again. Pastor makes female members. I want to pause there. How could you make female members perform oral sex on you and convince them that your nasty wee-wee has holy milk, which heals members. These women have got to be dumb as hell. That's all I can say. They have got to be sisters. Some of y'all are not y'all up in here. Some women have got to be dumb as a rock. I can't, whatever. I said, what? Impossible. 
an evangelical pastor arrested for raping his faithful after convincing them that his sexual... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to let me stop laughing. This is just so unbelievable. An evangelical pastor arrested for raping his faithful after convincing them that his sexual reproductive organs contain sacred milk. <laughs> See, this ain't funny. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. I know y'all laughing. But you see that word convincing? Do you, really t do you really think it took real convincing? No, they were ready for it. Um, am I saying the wrong thing? Talk to me. Am I saying the wrong thing? Like I say, you know who you're speaking to. You know if you're speaking to somebody that's willing to hear it or you know if somebody's going to smack the hell out of you when you come to the book that. You know the difference. So you, know, you ain't going to convince somebody that's set from the get-go they're not going to go with that. They're not going to that. Okay. Sobrino Valdeci Picanto, an evangelical pastor from Brazil, persuaded his followers that he practiced his strange beliefs because it was the way he preached the word, saying that his milk was sacred. Go ahead. The way he preaches what see hold it, hold it. The way he preached his word. You know what that means? That means the preacher had a dance. He said the words in a particular way. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all see how these preachers are? They're very crafty in how they deliver their message. They have the music and the organs behind them. Y'all y'all follow they bring per they say with personality. Somebody else could get up there and read the exact same scripture and it means nothing. But because he read it, because he put the dynamics behind it, the cut, the flip, he did all those other things out there. Now they say, oh, it's the way he did it. That's the reason why I'm going to consider his, uh, the contents of his rod as holy milk. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is really ridiculous. Wait, what? now I got to get a scripture. Get, we're going to come back to this article. We, I leave the article. We're coming back. Give me Galatians 1, 6, and 7. I got to show you how people, the Bible warns us that people will take the Bible, twist scriptures to get their perversity across. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel unto another gospel watch this which is not another which is not another it's why does it say which is not another meaning not another gospel who knows he says you move from the gospel which is not another who knows Ephraim right there yeah you because there's only one gospel there's no another gospel right they were using the same scriptures we got to manipulate people that's what they were doing and as we go further on in this class, I'm going to show you prime examples. So what we're reading here is what happened. He didn't use a different Bible. He used the same Bible we got. Now, what's, I'm waiting, I would love to see the scriptures he tried to pull to get these women to fall for this thing. Let's go back now. Read that. Did you finish that? No, so we didn't finish. Go ahead. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert. The gospel of Christ. That's it right there. They were perverting the gospel of Christ using the scriptures. They're going to come to you with the Bible. That's why be mindful of people. These ministers, they'll read one verse and give a four-hour sermon on that one verse. Run. You got to leave from that. Like T.D. Jakes is good right. for that. Right. And All it, them dudes is good for that. And you know he's in the Holy Spirit when he starts sweating. Yeah. and they put. Y'all know y'all really going to go on them then. Now, let's go back to the article. Is this the paragraph we at in this pastor? That one right there. And this pastor said his reproductive organs was blessed and that the Lord had consecrated with divine milk of the Holy Spirit and, of course, had to go around evangelizing. Now, you might laugh at that. We all laugh at that. But you know what? I'm going to show you how most of them, a lot of women and their mamas, would fall for that. You ever see these people on TV that got a handkerchief and say, send me 50 or $100 and I'll give you this holy, a holy hanky? How many women... Be sending hundreds, you know what I'm talking about, hundreds of dollars for their filthy sweat. Oh, me Guan get blessed. Me Guan get blessed with his nasty sweat. You're kidding me. Y'all laughing. I've seen this thing. I've known men that did that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. The rock from their backyard came from Jerusalem. And you it. send your check there. So this ain't far-fetched. This ain't far-fetched. All right, let me get to this paragraph I'm at or the next one. Okay. He convinced us that only God could come into our lives through the mouth. A follower said, often after worship, Pastor Valdeci asked us to do, perform oral acts on him until the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Until the Holy Spirit came through ejaculation and delivered funds to the church. You can't make this stuff up. I'm sorry. I can't read no more. Give me a scripture. I got to go to, give me Timothy, 2 Timothy 3. I might laugh myself into a heart attack up here. Now, after reading that, like I said earlier, because some of y'all were looking at me strange when I was saying that the people, that's the, they look for that. After reading that, that's nothing but perversion, what you just saw on the screen. The Holy Spirit came through the, through the, through the tube of his penis. This is, this is a bunch of stupidity. But people believe that. Now, they want to believe it. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start at 1. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh -huh. Covetous. Vainglory. Vain Covetous. Uh -huh. Boasters. Proud. You see that all in the rap world, and you see it in the comedic Israelite community. When men say, "I'm," if you can't get to the kingdom, but through me. Y'all better run from people like that. If I start saying that, y'all better smack me and throw me off the podium. Oh, you can, how do we get the kingdom, brothers? Right, through Christ. Keeping the commandments. He said, if you will enter into life, do what? Keep the commandments. You hear a brother stand up and say, you can, I'm the only man that can save Israel. You better run. That's some crazy stuff. Read on. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, uh -huh. unthankful, unholy, uh -huh. without natural affection. Without natural affection, meaning the affection that they claim to have is fake, it's phony. Go ahead. Truce breakers. Truce bre agreement breakers. Go ahead. False accusers. Uh huh. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Where, what verse you at? Verse four. Okay, go ahead. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Okay, go ahead. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Stop. Having a form of godliness. When it says having a form of godliness, it means they come to you with the Holy Bible. They will quote, they may even dress with fringes and a border of blue. That's a form of godliness. But notice what it says. But denying the power thereof. What is the power they deny? The laws of God. That's why all the things above it, look at all the things. In, it, these, the things he mentioned in verse 2 and 3 goes contradictory and 4 to the laws. Goes against God's laws. That's why it says having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away, meaning run, head for the hills. Watch this. For of this sort, this type of brother, are they which creep into houses. Here it comes. And lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Didn't we just read that in the article? That's what we just that read in the article. That's my point there. They were looking for silly women laden with sin, meaning that was in their spirit. And right. he saw that. He recognized that. That's the reason why. That's like I said, when they come in here, they look to see who's laden with certain spirits. Mm -hmm. Silly, silly women. Stupid. Another word for silly is stupid. They're, people don't want to hear me say this, but there are stupid women out there. And we read about a whole bunch of them. Nobody should be getting upset with anything. I mean, in reality. Oh, I'm going to get an email well, that's all right. and say, that's oh, you right. called me stupid. 
Well, Nobody sister, if you're doing that, you are stupid. If you understand what this what this lecture is about and the admonishment that's going forward, that it's that it that it is put out there to save your life, you should love everything that comes from up here. Exactly. Read verse six again. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women. Now it don't mean creep like they 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 came through the window, but that's spiritual. That is what they're doing. These brothers come with scriptures and are able, well versed to manipulate. Give me that scripture about uh, her breasts. You remember this back in the day. This was the pickup scripture that all Israelite men use when they would be on oil tables. You know what I want, Officer Leon? Five eighteen. Thank you. Proverbs five eighteen. Dad, you memorized that, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> This was the pickup scripture. A woman be walking by, and a brother would say, sister, sister, come here, come here, come here, come here. He wouldn't hit her with, I got oil first. He'd hit her with this scripture. Read that. That's not the verse. That ain't it. 19. Okay. okay. Proverbs 5, verse 19. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Y'all see that? See, sister, did you know that was in the Bible? She go, oh no. <laughs> eehaw, eehaw. That's what the brother hears come out of her mouth. She giggling, but all he hears is hee haw, hee haw. Because she is stupid as hell. I got her. She's mine. Next thing you see, the phone number. That's it. That is it. So now, when we go back to 2 Timothy 3 and, and verse 6, I might have to write a book on this stuff because I got a million stories. One sister came to the brother's house the same night. That he was on the oil to after that scripture, Proverbs 519, she came that night. Now, it was in the buildings around the corner. I, I remember. The brother said within two minutes, the sister took her jeans off. He said the smell oh, yeah. was, you remember the story? You was there. Not you was there with them, but you remember the story. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> Everything was secret. See, hold it, hold it. Let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. <laughs> Everything was secret until the jeans came off. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Nobody knew anything about the effect of the scriptures or nothing. But when that funk <laughs> hit the room, he, he said told the everybody. The paint started peeling off the walls. Once he told, right. Flies dropping once, out the air. Once, once that happened, exactly. Once that happened, he told everybody. Mm -hmm. Then he gave us the whole rundown. Exactly. I brought the scripture. The dumb hole showed up, blah, blah, blah. He did all that. He said, but I was going to do it. But then she took them doggone, took those, wow. Go ahead. So, uh, he, needless to say, he said he could, he could not seal the deal. He said he, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. So now, let me get back to the scriptures. I'm sorry. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 2 and 12. So, sisters, y'all looking for... I don't know what y'all, some of y'all are looking for, but there's brothers that come in Israel who deny the power thereof. So I'm not saying that everybody in IUIC is, these brothers is 100%. We got some, we working on these brothers to get them right. And That's Bishop, what, did you go over that foolishness? Not yet. No, no. The, the one way I had to put the picture up uh, with that incident with the women, with the several women. No, we, no, we didn't get there. Oh, okay. We ain't get there yet. We ain't get there yet. Get 1 Samuel 2 and 12. 1 Samuel 2, verse 12. Now, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. The sons of Eli was the high priest. He had sons that he taught script the law to, but they turned out to be the devil. Wicked as hell. They were sons of Belial. Go ahead. They knew not the Lord. Go ahead. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. So they were preparing the sacrifice. So the priest's servants, Eli's son's servants, would come with a big fork that had three teeth in it. Go ahead. And he struck it into the pan or kettle, or cauldron, or cauldron, or pot, all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. 
So the priest would take whatever he grabbed with that meat. He would say, this is mine. Go ahead. So they did in Shiloh until all the Israelites that came thither. Now this was wicked because the meat had not finished boiling or boiling yet. Go ahead. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. Give me the raw meat. I don't want to wait till it cooks. Go ahead. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat pr presently. Let us finish cooking this meat. Go ahead. And then take as much as thy soul desireth. Watch this. Then he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it me. Thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. So you see what these priests was doing? Eli's sons was wicked. These dudes was some thug priests. We're going to take what we want or else we're going to take it by force. That means knock you upside the head and take it. Watch this. It gets worse. Go ahead. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. So it was so bad. Nobody wanted to come up to the temple because these young men would come beat them up, threaten them, and take the sacrifice, sacrificial meat. Watch this. It gets worse. But Samuel ministered. Before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. Mm -hmm. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Come on. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, the Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. Right. She brought Samuel, Samuel up there to stay with him. Go ahead. And they went unto their, whole, their own home. Here and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now, this is the part where it gets worse with Eli's sons. Go ahead. Now, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the woman that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Do you see what their sons was doing? And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. These dudes was, they was, give me some nice words. They, was, they were players running through women like Skittles. Running game on these women. So it was happening back then. That's what, and believe me, it's happening today. Go ahead. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Get me <laughs> Sirach 26. And, now that's uh, the gospel. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. One more time. A wicked woman is given as a portion to... To a wicked man. This is why wicked women, they find they are spiritually connected to wicked men. Wicked men just got to throw a picture of the penis out there. The wicked woman will hone in on it and go, right there, that's me right there. The mouth is open. And she'll quote scriptures. And then when you try to correct the woman, she will fight you. Like Captain Isaac tried to correct his sister. Yes, she cursed she him fought out. him. He had to hang up okay, on. he had to hang up the phone on her because she was being so much. That's a lie. All them women is lying. I've been talking to him, and we're like, sister, we doing this out of love for you. We trying to warn you. And the other sister sent me a whole thing of dialogue of her going back and forth with an ending saying, "You stupid. You should have kept your legs closed. He don't want you." If she was a woman of God, she would have said, "You know what? I need to check this out." Hey, I got a video. I'm waiting till I get home to look at it. I don't know what's on it, so I don't want to play it while I'm up here. <laughs> but somebody sent me a video of the dude that was here. I'm going to wait. Uh, read that again, Officer Leon. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So, sisters, when we hear you say that your man is wicked, he ain't no good, guess what you're saying about you? That you're wicked. Understand that. And you brothers, too. You're Some of you married a devil woman. You condemn that woman, but you, something in her attracted you. Let me not just go right there. Let me just go over here like that. Attracted you 
So read it again for them. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Go ahead. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So now you brothers trying to get godly. You better let go of that wicked woman. Stop trying to hold on to her. She's going to destroy you. Let her go and find a righteous woman. This, they're out here. Some of them up in here right now. Just waiting. Waiting for you to get right. Now, give me 1 Corinthians 3. A lot of times brothers want to go deep. Bishop, can we go over Daniel 11 and 2 Ezra 12? No! It's not that I don't know it, because I do know it, but watch this. Verse, 1 Corinthians 3, let's start at 1. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. I would love to speak to you brothers as spiritual men. Go ahead. But as unto carnal. But a lot of you brothers are very carnal. You can't get over basic things like dealing with the woman. Go ahead. Even as unto babes in Christ. Your babes in Christ. Come on. I have fed you with milk. What is the milk that we are feeding you with? The word. That's very vague because that means Jesus wept. The laws. Officer Leon, get me Deuteronomy. I think it might be chapter 4 or chapter 6. One of them two where it says when you rise up with your kids. 6. Yeah, give me that. Deuteronomy 6. Give me that. This is going to prove to you what the milk is because it's going to deal with children. Wow. De Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let me look at it first. Let me see. Verse 7. Wait, wait, wait. Read 2 and then jump down to 7. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. So Moses is telling us to keep the commandments, the statutes and the commandments. Now watch verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. This is letting you know what the milk is. You don't give children steak. You give children things that they can eat and swallow and digest easily. Is that right? Yes. Read verse 7 again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Right. When you're sitting at home with your three-year-old, your two-year-old, your four-year-old, you're discussing laws like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. You're not going over Second Ezra 12 or Revelation 15 with them. Why? Because that is meat. The laws is milk. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right. When you lay down, go to sleep, you giving your child certain laws to meditate upon when you wake up, you ask the Lord to bless the children. That's milk. So now let's go back to where we was at. First Corinthians chapter three, verse two. I have fed you with milk uh -huh. and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Paul said you would not be able to bear the meat that I would want to give you because you're choking over milk. Little things like how to deal with a wife, how to, how to find a mate, a spouse. You go, ah, 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 I can't deal. It's too big. Take it out. <laughs> Little things like that, brothers and sisters, are choking over. We don't. Neither yet now are ye able. Paul said, even now you're not able to bear. What verse is that? That was verse 2. Verse 3. Go ahead. Go ahead. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife, and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Right, notice it says, uh, there's among you envying. Like, give me that scripture, Sirach uh, 26 and 6. Deacon Asaph just brought out about, there's four women. Captain Isaac spoke to one sister who defended the wicked Negro against the other three women that he was banging. Read that. Sirach 26 and verse 6. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. So the Bible tells you, that's a grief of heart. You got one woman, four women, and now they're all jealous. But one particular is just like a pit bull. When you, when you reveal to her, her man is a nigga. Her man is sleeping with all these different women. She will curse you out. You got to let a hoe like that go. Let her go. Let her get the blue waffle. If y'all don't know what a blue waffle is, Google it. 
Don't make sure no kids are around. Hey, y'all online, don't Google that for the kids. Don't put it up in here. Don't Go put home. it look, up. Look at it when you get home. Wait till you get home. Wait till you get home. Me, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I looked at it, it scared me to death. <laughs> <laughs> I heard one of the brothers mentioned it. Zeph and I mentioned it. And yeah. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? My dumb ass. <laughs> so I went and checked it out. <laughs> Hey, just understand. I told the bishop how bad it affected me. You remember? The most I said he will put diseases on you that's not written in this book that will mess you up. And some of you, he's going to make it clear that you have that disease. There's going to come a time where he's going to have to say, you know what? These men been speaking. I need to use somebody as an example. And some of you are going to catch these diseases. It's a disease that he's talking about. And that's Look it up. And that's judgment from God. Praise God. Because that's what it needs. Some people need that thing. Some people need it, Bishop. Because all these laws are coming out here. All this information coming out. People say, nah, I don't want to bring the nigger up front. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to ask. No, so the law said, okay, we, right. slap, boom, give it to them. Right. And I'm be on the side clapping. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I can't take it. Get can't 1 Corinthians it. 4, 1 and 2. Who remembers in here? Raise your hand. What? does marriage represent what does it represent let me see okay well, i got some hands up here let me see uh obadiah let me hear what you got what does it represent this is why the topic of marriage will never go old let me see if you got the answer right um shalom bishop shalom. it represents um christ dying on the cross for us according to ephesians 5 can we get it because you said it wrong can you get ephesians 5 you know what I want? 525. You, you, you messed it up. Have My fault, Bishop. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives. No, no. Down, low, low. Oh, excuse me. 20, might, no, it might be. Th what 20, verse is it? 24. 24. I'm not looking at it. Wait, stop. It. Paul tells you what marriage represents. It's near the bottom. Look near the bottom. Gosh. Yes, verse 32. Thank you. Okay. This is a great mystery. Marriage is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. That's what marriage represents. Paul, the Apostle Paul is telling you, marriage, the institution of marriage from the time of Genesis represents Christ and Israel. That's what the church is, Israel. That's what it represents. That's why the topic's never going to go old. Because you're always going to have Israel and Christ. You're always going to have marriage. It's always going to be there. Relations. Everybody up with me so far? All right, First Corinthians four and one. Are you going to say something? Yeah, I I, I know. I, I say certain things and people cringe when I say that. You know, it's a good thing when people get these these judgments. I only say things like this here because I want everybody to understand that the Lord is serious about what about His laws in this Bible. And if it's being taught, He's giving you the chance to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. And if you want to continue to refuse it, God says that He He loves judgment. So if God loves it, we love judgment. If, if you continue to disobey these commandments, when the Lord bring that judgment on you, that's a good thing. Because maybe you'll be an, uh, an example to the rest of the people. And that's why it's written, the Lord says, my word will not go out void, but it will accomplish all that I want it to do. So if we keep saying this to you and nothing happened, the angels are going to be like, look, the sisters are getting emboldened. Uh, that one right there, give her the blue waffle. <laughs> just like that there's a council in the heavens that the most high will say look we need to make something visible mm -hmm. or it could be more than that it could be you just hook up with a serial killer nigga and he kill you because you got a lot of black men that are violent and they will hide those violent tendencies until they have you alone in the house what was that Tyler Perry movie where the guy I forgot who his, his name was he's dancing with the woman and he's right, whispering right, right. I'm gonna beat your ass when we get home yeah I'm gonna, what's I'm the name of that ass. When Family I saw reunion. that, I'm like, Family whoa! Reunion. Family reunion. He's like, come here, baby. They were stripping. They was dancing in the house. He was like, you continue. Your girls continue. Don't worry about it. As soon as he got alone, he was like, slap! I was like, whoa! Yep. You never saw that. And he was handsome, well-dressed, nice and suit, rich. rich, smooth. And he was just smacking her up in front of but nobody knew it. And some of you are going to fall into that same place. You know why? Because like you're like you're everybody's saying because people don't believe. There's a scripture that talks about that where it says because judgment doesn't come forward quick yeah. enough. That one. Get that. Please ask these. Please ask these. 8 and 11. 8 and 11. Yes. 8 and 11. Read that. Okay. Yeah, that's it. 
Y'all got to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, can we find a clip? <laughs> There's no cursing it. Y'all got to find a clip. He's dancing with her. He's like, wait till we get home. I'm going to beat your black ass. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. I want y'all to listen. In the Bible, Ecclesiastes. Chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. What is sentence? Sentence is judgment. Like when you go before the court and they sentence you behind to years in prison for doing something wrong. Read it again. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So you might be in wickedness and you say, you know what? I got away with it this time. No judgment. So let me do it again. No judgment. Let me do it again. Because you get emboldened when you don't get that behind checked. When that, when, that, when, that, when that judgment don't hit you behind on the first time, you say, oh, well, maybe I'm okay. Read it again. Because sentence against an evil work. Be- it, against sin. An evil work is sin. Go ahead. Is not executed speedily. Because it didn't come on you immediately. Because that's how it is. That's, you think you got a grace period to keep on messing up. Right. But if, you was gonna, but if you're gonna, if you, if your behind was going to have to pay that check that day, you'd stop. If you knew that the minute you did something, death was going to follow the next minute, you put it down. All of a sudden, it ain't tempting to you no more. Read it. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Do you see that? So you try to tell somebody something, say, listen, sister, keep this commandment. Keep this law. Brother, keep this law. Keep this commandment. You hear that, and you don't hear the judgment behind it. Because we're telling you to keep the commandments, not because we just feel like saying it, because we know there's a penalty for breaking God's laws. So you say, ah, the hell with that. So that's why the scripture say what it's saying. Keep on. Though a sinner do evil in hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. See, the ones that fear God know that there's a judgment for that. But it shall not be well with the wicked. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Go ahead. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. The Most High going to put his ass to death. That's what it's saying. That's what it's talking about. Exactly. Now, where were we? We were in 1 First Corinthians, Corinthians 4. 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. And stewards of the mysteries of God. So, brothers, we are the ministers of Christ. All of us up in here, the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Go ahead. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So that's the main thing. We have to be found faithful in this truth. You men understand that? Yes, Must be found faithful. Get uh, Ezekiel 34. That's after she found a new man. Ezekiel 34, because we know some of you brothers have low self-esteem, and we know some of you sisters uh, came out of a world where the woman was taught that she was the queen of the earth. So there must come a balance with the word of the Most High and understanding. Read that for me. Ezekiel 34, 31. Ezekiel 34, verse 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. So the flock of God's pasture is men, and he means that thing. Go from there, go to Proverbs 8 and 4, okay? But in this world, especially in the black, comedic, uh, Israelite community, you're taught that the black woman is Queen Mother Earth. No. And you know, that doctrine's all in the UK, too. All the black women over, and we went on that radio show. Who was, was I, or is it getting here? They, queen this, queen that. Like, what the hell? And the black men ain't nothing. Go ahead, read that. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. The Most High is going to raise the man back up where he's meant to be. Because right now, in this society, we, ha- we are downtrodden. Downtrodden. Okay, and like we saw in the clip earlier, they are hiring black women in certain positions. And this one particular black woman was in cahoots to kill the black male babies or get them infected with uh, autism. 
and hide the proof. So from there, get me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Give me, no, give me uh, Isaiah 13, uh, 12, I think it is. You know what I want? I will make a man. That one. Bear with me and so let me find that thing. Mm-mm. I will make him. Verse 12, thank you. Isaiah 13, verse 12. This is what the woman must understand. You men too, but I want the women to understand what God's going to do. Go ahead. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. We might look like we ain't nothing right now. We downtrodden. We ain't got nothing. Can't be nothing. But the prophecy says. Read it again. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Go ahead. Even a man than the golden wedge of, of Ophir. Ophir. Ophir had the most uh, precious gold element in it. God says the man is going to be more precious than that. You women ain't going to be gold diggers. You're going to be looking for that righteous man. So that's what you got sitting up in here, who's the brothers who are trying to get right. Right. He ain't talking about no whoremongering type. He's going to kill that Negro. Exactly. He's talking about the ones that's trying to get themselves right. And like the bishop said, we're not saying that, everybody's, that every man in here is perfect. We're saying that the brothers in here are at least trying. So when they do something wrong to you, they're going to look to us for correction, and then we can help you in your relationship. There's no place that you're going to go to, and the men are just perfect. That's why Christ said, when they asked him, why are you with the, uh, with the, the sinners? He said, those that are whole need not a physician. The, where you get the physician is here. We the doctors. We coming at them with the law. They're here to get help. So as I said before, some of you look at the men out here as, oh, they're garbage. I'm not going to deal with them. To go pick up with a nigga that don't want no help. He don't want no physician. He don't want no scriptures. That's why you're going to get rocked by Satan. That's right. Exactly. At least God's giving you something to work exactly. with. Exactly. <laughs> First Corinthians 11 and 3. Right. If they don't, and listen, if a lot of these chicken head women that don't want to get right, that the brothers is trying to get themselves together, trying to do the right thing, they don't want to, they don't want to deal with the brothers here. They want to go outside and get, get one of that crazy garbage out there. Go. Mm -hmm. Go get what you deserve and die. Right. And just we, we're not begging nobody because right. the most high gonna give us, he's gonna give us our glory. All the thing we have to do is stay by this and the hell with the rest of you. So just remember their faces. That's all I say. Remember that when they reject you brothers in the truth and go out in the world and get pregnant. And they come back to you, just remember that face. Say, oh, no, ho. Oh, no, ho. <laughs> Let everybody know. That woman was with us in the truth. She rejected it, went out there, right. got pregnant. Right. Now she's coming up back in here right. to, for somebody to take care of her. Right. Hell no. Let her sit there and suffer. Right. Give her five years. Let's see if she lasts. Because if she's sincere, she'll stay here for five years. We've known some sisters that went out and got Edomites and tried to come back, in the, come back to the brothers. I remember the brother telling us, said, listen, I don't accept white man's garbage. Tell her to get, wow. the hell, get the hell out of here. Go wow. back out there in the street. <laughs> like a dirty dog. Give me that. First Corinthians 11 and 3. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I, will, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, sometimes we may use this scripture to shut sisters down. But we bringing it out in class to show the understanding. Everybody understand that? This can be used as a hammer or it can be used to reveal the mysteries of God. And it ain't really no mystery because it's written plain. That way there should be no confusion of her saying, why I got to listen to you? Because God says so. That's why. You've been listening to the white man all your life. Now listen to God. Because God's words is coming through you, brothers. Okay, understand that. So, now I know I said about a dirty dog. Sister screwed up her face. Can you get me the dirty dog scripture, please? I'll tell you what I say. It's going to be in the, what we say. It's going to come out to scriptures. Ecclesiastes and Sirach 26. You know what I want, the dirty dog scripture? Is that somebody screwed yes. their face up when the bishop said that? See, that's the what I'm dog. talking about. Dog. Hey, that's, that's the beauty of the Bible. <laughs> It gives us a license to run our mouth. Because some of y'all be like, oh, you heard what he said? Exactly. But we're quoting the word of God. <laughs> but, the, but the point behind it all is that the whole reason why this is being brought up is to hurt your feelings enough for you to get right. That's what That's Paul said. Paul said that the in medicine, the, the medicine never goes down smooth. Okay. 
He said, I'm glad that I made you sorrowful. That's what Paul said in his letters, if y'all remember where that scripture is. I wrote them to make you feel, because if you're a godly person, it's going to bother you. If you're a wicked nigga, you're just going to dismiss it. Mm -hmm. exactly. Sirach chapter 26, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. See, there you go right there. So I didn't just make that up. God said that. God said a shameless woman, a hussy. Remember that back in the day, a hussy? That's right. <laughs> it's counted as a dog. So let me get this straight. This madness that we were talking about earlier, would these women be considered shameless? Yes. You're damn right. So according to the scriptures, they're dogs. That's what the most I said. I don't give a damn about people getting mad. I really don't. I'm, I want people to get their minds right when it comes to this Bible. And we're going to clean up Israel. I'm telling you straight up now. We got a program that we're going to put forward. We're going to clean this organization, congregation up. All the garbage and the filth, we're going to get it out. And that's why I was saying we've evolved to the point where if people don't want to listen, the best thing for them to do is leave. The best thing for you to do is leave. They got their chance to take their walking papers and roll right, now. Just go. When don't, the don't come through, we're going to get rid of don't all Don't let us filth. keep going back. If, if you don't believe that what we have here can help you, just leave. Go someplace else where they sing songs, they jump around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm watching the blood of Jesus. Go there. Or they could go to South Park Camp on 34th Street. Yes. Or just go right down to 34th Street where they curse you like a dog. Okay. And then line you up later and then ask you for money. Just go down there. You don't have to stay here. You, you got to understand. The scripture said that ye are the light of the world. And we are a city that, that, have to, that shine, that's set on a hill. If we're going to be that, spark, that sparkling jewel, we can't have garbage among us. If you don't want to get yourselves right, this is not the place for you. And I, and I say that to men and women. If you're not willing to get yourselves right, leave. Right. This is not a play game. This is not a congregation to play in. Y'all remember before I said, I started saying this before, that some of you are crash test dummies. Crash test dummies. Give me Judges 511 for a minute. I'm going to prove that to you. Some of you are only here to make us get sharp at what we do and to make an example out of you. That's it. And then the Most High is not going to use you. Judges chapter 5 verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. The noise of archers, war. Read on. In the places of drawing water. Slaves draw water. We're in captivity. This place is at war now. Read on. They, there, shall they rehearse the righteous acts All of the, the Lord. All the lands of our captivity, we are rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. So when you do a dress rehearsal, like when you're doing a movie or a script or whatever, there's going to be mistakes. And then as the mistakes um, take place the people the lead characters they get better it's the same thing with us some of you are here only to make us better only to make our congregation stronger so your bull crap relationship you have is what we're going to use to say okay we're not going to make that mistake again you see this person here they got sick we're not going to let that happen to person this person got killed this person not that's what you're here for some people are only here, and when the good part come in the end, when the movie's about to play out, your name ain't going to be in it. Uh, did did y'all understand what the, what the digger just said? Your name, you're not going to be in the movie. The greatest movie ever created. Y'all not going to be in it. <clears throat> let, me, let me give you, a, a, if I can, just one scripture. Give me the scripture in Matthews uh, 18 about the offense. Because what, what Deacon Asaph just said is this one right here about the offenses. The most high, this is this is entertainment to him. He's sitting back watching. He's casting. He's the greatest director ever in mankind. To hell with Steven Spielberg. Okay? Or Michael Bay. This is the greatest movie director ever. This is like a movie right now. Matthew chapter 18, verse 5. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. It's verse 7 that I want. Verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. 
that's what Deacon Asaph is talking about. Some of some some people, some of you are gonna come in here just to fit this what we read. What here. we just said. You're just here for an offense. So don't take this as a joke. This is very okay. serious. Read, read it again. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Woe unto the world because of offenses. There's gonna be people that's gonna come in these doors. Their purpose is to offend. Meaning, just like you just said, they're going to become examples. That's they're it. going to get the blue waffle, the death, the AIDS, all of it. That's it. Going to be made public examples. The horrible relationship. For the purpose, for the purpose of the rest of you. The Lord is going to bring them up to destroy them just to wake you up. That's right. For read, it, read it again. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come there's a need for the offenses to come why because of the rest of us go ahead but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. so the most are going to kill that person so the question that i say to you is you should try to make sure that this person is not you that's the message behind this you don't want to be the one that's the castaway like the other scriptures talk about you don't want to be the, you don't want to be the one made to be the example here you, here you come through, learn all of this, and get killed in the end so that exactly. others can see your stupid example and wake up because That's of that. And then you're behind dying the process. You are just a waste of life. <laughs> you are just taking up space on this earth. And some of you, that's why it, we've come to the resolution we cannot talk to you no more. Just leave them to themselves. They're just an extra in the movie. They're going to die before the credits roll. They're that's that black man are. in the movie that's yes. token that always get the, killed. The, the black guy. The black, that, you're he, that black he dies. Guy. He don't even make it to the end of the movie. And I'm dead serious. Some I of y'all. I, I go to the bathroom. I come back to the nigga he's dead. He's dead. What happened to him? They killed him. Okay? Even when you look in the wilderness, when you have people rebelling, Moses went and spoke to the Most High, and he said, kill him and leave their bodies up for all Israel to see. Because Israel needs examples. Exactly. Give me Genesis 3. And 16. Let's go to the law. Because we read earlier, 1 Corinthians 14, I think you read 40, about as also saith the law. Yes. Right. This is the law that Paul was making reference to, where it said, let the women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted them to speak. He says, as also saith the law. This is it here. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Now, this law that we're about to read was from the beginning of time. This law, we are transitioning to this law. And guess what? This law shall cover the earth. Watch. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Right. Uh, menstrual cycle, baby birth. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Mm -hmm. Why? And, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. This is what Babylon teaches us to go against. But in Israel, we're coming right back. to, And the only women that's going to be saved are those women that obey this. Give me that now in 1 Timothy to prove that. So hold your finger right there. Can we come in right back here? 1 Timothy, the one that says, nevertheless, they shall be saved. 2.15. Give me that. Nevertheless, she shall be saved. I want that verse. I ain't looking at it, so I'm trusting you to just get it. First, first Timothy 2, 2 verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So you read that and think, oh, all I got to do is have a baby. No, it's talking about Genesis 3, 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's the childbearing he's talking about. Read. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If, if, two-letter word, big meaning. If she does what? They continue in faith. Continue in faith. And charity. Loving your neighbors, you love yourself. And holiness. Holiness, which goes back to the laws. With sobriety. With shamefacedness. All that goes back to Genesis 3.16. So, Bishop, that's heavy because, read it one more time. Let me show you how heavy that is. Because it's showing again what I said before I started to speak. There's criteria that must be met for the woman. Read it again. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in you, childbearing. He says before that, you need to be quiet. But in your quietness, you'll be saved only if this. Read on. In childbearing, if 
They continue in faith. The faith means you believe that this is a place that can help you. You believe that this is a place where you can get right. You believe that we have your best interest. Because a lot of times we tell the sisters things and they get offended. They get mad. And even though we're showing it to them in the scriptures, they don't have faith that what we're telling them is for their own good. So read it again. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith. So a lot of them don't have faith in the word of God. Read on. And charity. A lot of them don't have charity because they don't know how to keep the commandments with us. They don't know how to keep the, the, the covenant, the brotherly covenant. They get mad. They get angry. They screw up their face. They go home. They start talking. They start complaining. Like we have nothing better to do but pick on them. To dig into their personal lives. And what we're trying to do is to help them get into the kingdom. Read on. And holiness with sobriety. In their right mind. Because a lot of these women have lost their damn mind. That's why Paul said, look, I don't want to hear nothing you have to say in that chapter. Stay quiet. You have lost your mind. So you got to keep faith. You got to keep charity. And you got to have a sober mind. Or you not get it in the kingdom. And some of the women you can see by their actions, they don't believe in the kingdom. They're just here. They're just showing up. They don't believe nothing that, they're, that we're reading to them. And that's why the most I can say, look, angels make an example out of her. Exactly. For the rest of the women that okay, do want to For the rest right. of the women that do want to stay here, that's fighting to be here, you make an example out of her. She don't believe. Exactly. Go back to Genesis 3.16. Genesis 3.16. Unto the woman, he said... I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. This is the childbearing that Paul was making reference to. Come on. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. So that's to remind them. This, the pain and sorrow is to remind them of the disobedience Eve had against Adam. Wife against husband. Go ahead. And thy, Woman against man. Go ahead. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Uh -huh. And he shall rule over thee. This is what a lot of women today, when becoming born again, they have to accept this. If not, they're go not going to get the kingdom. Now, for you men, watch the next verse. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So the Lord says to Adam, because you hearken to the voice of your wife. Now was his wife righteous? No. But he listened to God says, don't eat. Don't learn of this. The wicked woman said, I learned it. Now I'm going to share it with you. That's the right. husband said, okay. <laughs> That's some of you men up in here. Yes. Some yes. of you men right now have wicked women at home. Yes. One in their mouths in your ear and you're going, Okay. Yes. And you sit amongst us like everything's gravy. Everything ain't gravy if you're listening to a wicked woman. She's telling you don't go to the class, stay home, watch the kids. She's calling the shots for you left and right, and you're hearkening to her. God can't use you. This is why God cursed Adam. He read it again. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Look, read that again. And unto Adam he said, Because Thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. One more time. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. This is why Paul was saying, Shut up. Be silent. But now here, 2016, you brothers come in. What the, what the, what the woman got to say? Remember Paul, the brother Paul that used to be with us? He was always asking his sisters, What does this scripture mean? And we said, Bro, what are you doing, bro? This is back this is a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> what does the scripture mean? Why you got all these brothers and you run into the woman? To the woman for a breakdown. That's Simple what Adam did. So now, back to you men. First, First Kings chapter one. What we're about to read, we've read this some time ago, but I want to show you that the 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 stand that King David had towards women. I want to. I want y'all to see the the, the mentality. Some of you will hear your woman say something and run with it. Let's see what King David did. First Kings chapter 1, verse 11. Now, what, I'm a, let me fill it in for you. Solomon was already promised to be king, but um, 
His brother. What was his brother's name? Uh, Abishai. Or, what was his name? Ab- Not Absalom. The one that was going to be set up as king. Adonijah. 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 They're trying to set him up as king now. So now, watch this. First Kings chapter 1, verse 11. Wherefore, Nathan spake unto Bathsheba. Now, watch what Nathan the prophet says to David's wife. Now, they weren't married, but he was talking to her. So men and women did talk that were not married. There's nothing wrong with that. But Nathan the prophet uses the woman Bathsheba, knowing that King David will dismiss her. He's, he's setting up the scene. Watch what he does. Go ahead. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign? And David our Lord knoweth it not? Come on. Now therefore come let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel. So that, Nathan said, I'm going to give you counsel on what to do about this. Go ahead. That thou mayest save thine own life in the life of thy son Solomon. He says, listen to me, I'm going to save your life and your son Solomon's life. Just listen to what I'm saying. Here you come. The in unto King David and say unto him, Didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. He said, I'm a, after you say that, I'm going to come behind you. Watch. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber. And the king was very old. And Abishag the Shumanite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, what wouldest thou? Come on. And she said unto him, my lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, as surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now, my lord, the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat, and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all thy sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon, thy servant, hath he not called. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. Now I want you to notice that Nathan the prophet gave her one paragraph, one sm- maybe two, three sentences. He said, say this. That's it. Notice all that she said. It's almost a whole chapter with her talking. Picture her before the king. He's old. Uh, uh, Leon read it very slow. Women do not talk slow. And then this and this and this was going to happen. You got a chitty chat, 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 chat. So now Nathan comes in. David's like, thank God. Watch what David. Watch this. And they told the king, saying, "Behold, Nathan the prophet." And when he was coming before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said. My Lord, O King, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he has gone down this day, and hath slain oxen and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the king's sons, and the captains of the host, and Abiathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save King Adonijah, but me, even me thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Beniah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon hath he not called. Is, is this thing done by my lord the king, and thou hast not showed it unto thy servant, who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Here you come. Then king David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. Now, he had already dismissed her. We didn't read it, but to call her back me, he told her, get the hell out. Go, get out. He wanted to hear what the prophet had to say now. He heard what the man of God said. He said, okay, call that woman back up in here. Go ahead. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, as the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, 
and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. What I want y'all to see, Nathan knew that David was not going to listen to Bathsheba. But she was going to rant and rave, put the thought in his head, he's, mm, I'm, I'm going to dismiss it, until the man of God confirms what's being said. Now I brought that up because some of you will listen to the woman first and run with what she says, not realizing it's all her emotions. She's angry. She's pissed off at some other sister. And you brothers, yeah, and a sister said this. Ah, ah. Bruh, that's not what happened. Your wife is exaggerating the situation. Your wife is lying. That's not what happened. That's we right. hear it all the time. And we look back at you brothers and go, you men are simple as hell. Listening to the rantings and ravings of a lunatic. That's right. <laughs> Bishop, can we give another example? Yeah. First Kings chapter 21, verse 7. We're going to read to 15, and I want you to read it fast. First Kings chapter 21, verse 7. This is another example that the Most High documented about a man listening to his wife. And then from doing that, destroyed everything. First Kings Let me just give you the scenario. This is the story of Naboth with the vineyard. The king saw the vineyard. It was close to his residence and he wanted the the vineyard for himself but Naboth said look this is my pride and joy this is my inheritance i want to keep it i don't want to sell it i don't want no money i don't want to give it up it's an inheritance i want to keep it in my family but the king was obsessed with it and he wanted it so he came home sad he came home with his face down and his wife wants to know what's wrong with you so that's where it's starting now he sad he didn't want to eat. Yellow this dog on thing was sickening. That's on yeah, didn't want to eat. Sad. It's on the bed. <laughs> this is the wife speaking. The now. He's a king. He's a king, ruling everything. And look what the wife says. Go ahead. First Kings twenty-one, verse seven. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, "You notice that name Jezebel is used in the Bible two times, and both times in the Bible, in the New Testament and Old Testament." It's a woman trying to take control of men's affairs. That's where the Jezebel spirit comes from. That's why in, the, uh, in this chapter, she dies. And in the New Testament, when they speak about her, Christ is saying, we're going to kill her and kill everybody who she's connected to. Read on. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? So she's telling him, look, nigga, you run this. She's gassing them up. You run this. You govern the kingdom of Israel. Fix your face. Read on. Arise and eat bread and let thine heart Arise be and eat bread because you can see him. This, this, she put the food out. He's sitting in front of it like your kids, they won't eat. She's like, nigga, what's wrong with you? I made that food eat. He's like, oh, I'm sad. I don't want to like eat. Like a baby. Like a, like a child. That's how some of you men act. Read on. Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. I will be happy. Eat the food. Be happy. Read on. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezebel. She said, I'm going to get it. After the king was already turned down by a man, two men were talking. The man said, look, I don't want to sell my vineyard. This is an inheritance. I want to keep it in my family. The woman steps in and says, I'm going to get it for you. Read on. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. She forged his name. On paperwork, on documents. And some of you men give women power over other men by giving them power over your fears to manipulate other men. Read on. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city. And got other men involved in positions of authority. Read on. Dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. She said, we're going to set this nigga up. We're going to get everybody to fast against Naboth. Read on. And set two men, sons of Belial. Get two him. liars. Because always a woman got two sidekicks. We see it here. We had women in Israel United in Christ who had sidekicks. <laughs> Read on. To bear witness against him saying. To back up the lie that I'm telling you to create. Read on. Some of those women on Facebook right now yes. typing. Yes, yes, yes. And like just, the bishop just so said. you know, just like what the, what, the, what the deacon and the bishop just said, we had to clean that garbage out of here too. That's right. And we did it beautifully. Let me just piggyback off what the deacons, what the bishop said. You have women who were kicked out of here five years, six years, seven years. And they're on Facebook still to this day. Right after the Passover, they took our picture. They were writing stuff on it. They were passing it around. 
Okay, one of the women got kicked out because she went and um, got into an, an adulterous relationship with another man. You would think she's in a new relationship getting penis. She's happy. She's free from IUIC. But what is she doing? Still looking at every single thing that happens here. You didn't want to be with no cap. You wanted to go. Okay, you're free. Why are you still watching here? Because you know judgment's coming. Because you there know you judgment is coming point. for your That's behind. Right there. So Satan is like, look, I got to make this judgment good. Why would your mind still be on this place that did so much damage to your life? Every single person that get kicked out of IUIC, all of a sudden, their friends are on her page, exchanging stories and information. I'm not making this up because what she don't know is other people send us stuff. All her little quotes, all her little stuff she's saying, all her little evil that she's saying, and the people are like, yo, this woman is obsessed with you. Some of those people are her friends. Read on. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear. Get two liars to signify this scheme that I set up. Read to on. To bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. So they said, tell lies. Make, get two men to back up that he lied on the king. Read on. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And eventually he was killed. Her plan worked. So what I'm saying is, and what the bishop brought out with his scenario is, some of you when men will take the words of your wife and run with it. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jezebel say proclaim a fast? Who can explain why she said that? But that's how you got to look at it. Come on with it. Seth. So that it can appear that she did in righteousness. Exactly. So that she can appear holy She's and so righteous. Holy. That's why I always say watch these scripture quoting holes on Facebook. They always portray themselves so holy, but That's they're right. individualites. They with nobody. They with no camp. And they got a whole bunch of scriptures on their page. And that's the, exactly the, the, the attributes of what Jezebel does. All the women that are like that trying to manipulate the church, they're excellent at quoting scriptures and memorizing scriptures, but they got the devil on them. Okay? And I'm going to show you another thing with that Jezebel spirit about when the bishop said about her proclaiming the fast. They're always going to use the scriptures in a way to manipulate the minds of the people. It's never going to be clear cut about what's wrong, who did what, who did this, who did that. It's always going to be with the scriptures, so you're going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Because that's what I'm hearing from some of the other sisters that complain. They, she pulled, a, one of the sisters told me she pulled the scripture saying that she's an elder mother and you must listen to me. Don't go to none of the other. Because I asked her, why didn't you come and tell me nothing? She said, well, I was told that because they're in a position of authority, I cannot go to anybody else. I must come to them. So the person who does not know the scriptures because they use scriptures, they use that to keep them right where they want them. And we've seen that with our own eyes. So as I said, those two examples right there, uh, uh, another point I wanted to make was, Let's say, right, we're far over here. We don't know what's going on. Because a lot of times, before I even involve the woman, I'll call the men up and I'll ask them, did this happen? They say, no, Deacon, I would never do that. You know I wouldn't do that. You know, I'm, I'm watching the class. I'm learning. So you know what I do? I have a whole bunch of incidents. I see how you respond to the first one. Then I bring number two. Then I bring number three. And I'm watching you deny all one, two, and three. Then when I'm up to four and five, and I'm watching you deny every single thing. And you want to convince me that everybody that came to your house was a liar? You're messing with the wrong person. You are messing with the wrong person. A lot of times when I approach you, I already know what's going on. But I want to see where your mind is. So I'm not going to let you know 10 people complain. I'll tell you about one or two or maybe even three. But four, five, and six, now I'm seeing where your mind is. Your mind is in denial concerning this woman. And you're going back to the end no matter what comes out. Unless I have a video camera showing your wife in the woman's face like that, disrespecting her, you're going to defend her to the end. That's how some of you men are. And a perfect example of how you cannot be like that is when you read the story of Solomon, when the two women had the baby, and they were both trying to say, the baby's mine. Solomon had to use wisdom. No one was there except those two women to verify whose baby it was. So S Solomon had to ask questions and say things in a way where the truth comes out. Y'all think we don't know how to do that. If I question you long enough, I am going to get the truth. 
Exactly. Look at verse, jump, same chapter. Look at verse 25. You men, pay attention to verse 25. First, first Kings chapter 21, verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Here it comes. Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Y'all see that? Jezebel, his wife, was always in his ear getting him. A lot, you know, a lot of brothers in jail because of that. A lot of brothers in jail because a woman stirred him up. He looked at me. He said such and such to me. Go beat him up. Right. And now she's giving a blue waffle to another brother. <laughs> <laughs> Look at uh, uh, Revelation 2.18. The book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira Tira write, these, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Thyatira is a Greek word. Who knows what Thyatira means? Jan, what does it mean? It means daughter. It's a Greek word for daughter. What, and I want y'all, you men, to pay close attention what Christ says regarding this con the church of Thyatira, the congregation of Thyatira, which means the congregation of daughters. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee. Now, let's see what these few things Christ has against this church of Thyatira. We, these are Israelites. Watch this. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Let's pause there. Which calleth herself a prophetess. Be careful of women that tell you she's a prophetess. If a woman is a prophetess, guess what? Everybody would know it. It ain't going to be her saying, listen. I want you to know that I'm a prophetess. When, she, when Miriam spoke, all Israel knew she was a prophetess. Because when she spoke things about what she saw, it came to pass. But when you get women today, night, 2000, what year is this? 2016. 2016. Well, like Juanita Bynum. I'm a prophetess. Watch them hoes. They're trying to manipulate you to get you to go with what they say. We had one. Remember the sister that was with us? Who would say she was a prophetess? Yes. And they they left, yes. and now they're doing their own thing. Doing their own Husband thing. weak, Ew, yes, dear. She's telling all of us she's a prophet. Oh, you ain't no prophetess. If you're a prophetess, you don't have to announce it. Everybody's going to know. It's going to be clear that the Most High is working with you. That's why it says in that she calleth herself a prophetess right. in Revelation. Yep. She's self-proclaimed. Exactly. Read that again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach, to teach, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. So there's a lot of red flags there. So not only does she call herself a prophetess, she's teaching, and she's teaching people to seduce God's servants to commit fornication. Go ahead. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. It's okay if you sell, take part in Christmas or Mother's Day. It's okay. Go ahead. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. So now Christ has given up, gave us space to repent of her fornication. Go ahead. And she repented not. She repented not. Because a lot of times these women, they don't want to give up that masculine spirit of dominance over men. Watch these women that come out of the feminist movement and they want to come in Israel and dominate and tell men what to do, what not to do. It's hard for many of them to repent. I'm not saying it's impossible, but they don't want to give up that rulership. Watch. Read on. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, uh -huh. except they repent of their deeds. Except they repent of their deeds. Come on. And I will kill her children with Death. Y'all know who her children are? Those that follow her. All of those men and women that follow that Jezebel spirit Christ said, I'm going to kill her children. So basically what you said is all of Facebook. That they're Facebook all going to get connection. killed. All of them. All of them women running their mouth on Facebook, they're going to die. Most are going to yes. kill them all. And that's why we don't. I, I would like to be able to contact you and tell you, sis, just relax. You know, take it easy. Take a breather. You know, it's not that serious. You're destroying yourself. 
But you can't because what I've seen now is they are ordained to do this. They are condemned to this damnation. Okay, because me, if I leave here, you're not going to see me continuously talking about anybody. I'm going to move on with my damn life. That's why, they, remember what we were saying in the world, get a life. You don't have no life when you're watching other men's business. You're waiting for pictures to come up to write things on their picture. And put it on your page for everybody to see any little thing that pops off. Like I was telling the bishop today, I was laughing. There's a camp, a, a little rinky-dink toy camp that somebody took a little snippet of you. And he took the snippet and he put it up on his page. And someone alerted me and it had 13 views. <laughs> so I contacted the person back. I was like, yo, leave this guy alone with his 13 views. It may hit 20 by the end of the year. Leave him alone. But he really believes in his head that he's doing some type of damage. He really believes. You hear him screaming in the most high and he's talking in camp. But any little thing he thinks he can find against us, he's taking it. He's searching other people's page to put. You ain't got no life, bro. You're not a man of God. Mm, that's pathetic. Come on. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Uh -huh. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto you, unto every one of you, according to your works. Right. So no, he, notice he said he gave her space to repent and them. Go ahead. Watch this. But unto you I say, and unto the rest, unto the rest in Thyatira. Listen good. Listen good. As many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan. Stop. Right there. Notice, many as have not this doctrine, meaning women leading them, women teaching them, and which have not known the depths. Meaning there is what, brothers? Levels. levels to this thing. There's levels to this thing. When you are following a woman, whether she's your wife, whether it's your mama. I'm talking about you grown men now. When your mama, my mama said this. You're a grown man. My mama said don't do that. you simple. What my auntie say? There's there's levels and depths to how Satan runs. And when he goes through the woman and you men is following behind her, chitty chat, 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 that's another level. It's hard <laughs> to pull you out of that abyss. <laughs> and right. Bishop, the levels of Satan is so, is, is so deceptive. You'll think you're in the mercies of God. you think you're rolling with the, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You'll actually think you're in the Holy Spirit. Your head is so messed up. You come around real brothers, real brothers be like, what the hell is this? But you're so far gone. You Negroes are funny, and I'm going to tell you why you're funny. The scriptures tell you all things are written afore time for our learning. In the very beginning of the Bible, you read about a man being manipulated. The first man being manipulated by his wife. But you look at your wife, 6,000 years later, 7,000 years later, say, not my wife. She's not like Eve. <laughs> you read about Lot's wife. Destruction was told and angels came because some people want a revelation. Angels knock. Yo, you and your family got to get the hell out. We're going to kill everybody. Lot's wife, who was much, much more in the scriptures than you women now, she was in a place of, I don't believe. She was in a place of doubt. There are numerous men connected. Job, after everything that happened, his wife said, curse God and die. Okay, and you don't believe your wife is going to get emotional enough in this time and date when the world is wickedest that it's ever been that she could go off. And some of you men really believe that in your head. That's why I got to figure, I'm trying to figure out what the hell are you reading? Men who've written all through the Bible and saw these righteous men, their wives went off. David's wife, uh, what's her name, Macau? Numerous e e examples of their wives getting emotional. And the men having to correct them. But you in your day and age, when we're in the last go-round of this, okay, when you need to hit that home run, where you need to get that shot, you're going to foul out and you're going to lose and you're going to lose the game. Because you don't believe that the devil could come through your wife. And you're going to argue her and let her continue in evil and you are her first line of defense. You're supposed to be correcting her. You're supposed to tell her, look, honey, calm down. Take it easy. I'm going to look into it. Yep. Get a uh, uh, First Kings eighteen and four. Let me show you how that Jezebel spirit. When a woman wants to dominate and rule and teach, she will hate all men of God. Listen good. She First, will hate all men of God. Read First Kings eighteen verse four. For it was so 
When Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, she cut off the prophets of the Lord, I meaning she put them to death. Jezebel was on a, remember, she just had set, set up a fast to portray herself as righteous. Now she's hunting the men of God and killing them. That's what Jezebel is doing. Read it again. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. That Obadiah, Obadiah, prophet, a servant of David, I mean, a servant of Elisha, Elijah, go ahead, took an hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave. Obadiah had to hide the prophets. There were a lot of prophets. That's why it's not just one. You always had one main one, but there were always many prophets, just like today. Don't think this is something new. So he hid them by 50s in caves so that Jezebel, the prophetess, would not murder them. Hello, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.